What is up everybody? This is Dayton and this is the Baseline Show, you guys. This is podcast number two, but coming at you both in video form on YouTube and of course just sound form on SoundCloud, you guys. So if you're watching this on YouTube, guys, remember to check it out on SoundCloud. And if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, guys, go to the Baseline Show on YouTube, of course, and subscribe. You guys, let's go ahead and get into number two, guys. We're going to break down uh, go down the Jazz first. I'm an educated and opinionated NBA fan. Uh, the Utah Jazz is the main team I cover. However, we will be going not just Jazz. We will be going into regular NBA stuff today as well. But first, we will cover the Utah Jazz, how they're doing, uh, their trade options, their trade rumors, and then we'll go into the trades that recently happened. Um, we'll go into some potential trades in the NBA, and then we'll go into the buyout market in the NBA. I think will be interesting. So we're going to do it like that, you guys. But first, we will do Utah Jazz. Uh, before we get in, guys, the jersey we are representing today is the Wizards number 23. Blue Wizards number 23. You guys know this is Michael Jordan's Wizards jersey. That's the jersey I'm wearing today. So if you guys are watching this, you can see that. If you're not watching this, you guys can just imagine that. Um, guys, remember to smash that like button. Also, guys, before we get into this video, I just want to let you know I'm going to be way more active on Twitter. I changed my Twitter handle to at Dayton on the NBA. At Dayton on the NBA. D A Y T O N O N T H E N B A. Follow me on Twitter. You guys can ask me any NBA questions and I'll give you my honest opinion if I think it's real, if I think it's going to happen. And, you know, if you guys just want to know anything that you maybe don't know or you can't find, you can ask me. So, guys, follow me on Twitter. Hit me up at Dayton on the NBA. You guys go ahead and do that. But without further ado, let's get into the Baseline Show podcast number two. You guys, so as you guys know, I'm a Utah Jazz fan. I got my Jazz hat on. I'm wearing the Wizards jersey, but I got my Jazz hat on. I got to rep my guys. Um, the Jazz uh, are sitting comfortably right now. Uh, well, okay. No one in the West is sitting comfortably. But they are sitting in the seventh seed with a 30-24 and 24 record. Six games above 500. And guys, let's not forget that the Jazz have... One of the easiest schedules for the rest of the way through. So I'm pretty confident in us making the playoffs. You know, we've been playing really good lately behind the great play of all-star snub Rudy Gobert and all-star snub Donovan Mitchell, you guys. So let's go ahead and just break down that real quick. Uh, we're sitting in the West 7th seed. Um, you guys, in the month of January, you know, Ricky Rubio went down. We have a lot of injuries. The Jets still got a lot of injuries right now. Um, we went without a point guard for a long time. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, you guys, is something else. He has completely stepped up his game. And as a matter of fact, you guys, in the month of January, January alone, Donovan Mitchell averaged 28 points. Let's see, 20, where is it? Okay, 28 points, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds, you guys. I mean, this guy just balled out. Um, not to mention his uh, shooting percentages went up as well. Um, he also won rook, uh, not rookie player of the week, uh, one of those weeks there in January. So, uh, Donovan Mitchell's now, uh, complete season totals is 22.4 points per game, 4.0 assists and 3.8 rebounds. He is now having an effective field goal percentage of 48, a real field goal percentage of 43 and shooting 33 from the three point line. Uh, which, if you, you know, it sounds low still, and it is low, but if you go back to where it was on our first podcast that has still gone up, all of his stats have gone up. He's, I mean, he's averaging 22.4 four assists and 3.8 rebounds. Just absolutely on a tear, you guys. Killing it, leading the Jazz to that amazing January where they only lost a couple of games, you guys. Let's go down the list again. Uh, Rudy Gobert now got his points per game average up to 15.1. Rebounds at 12.8. Blocks at 2.2. And guys, his assists are at 2.2. Uh, he's number one in the NBA in win shares. Uh, another reason why he was snubbed. I will get to that in a little bit. Um, but 15, 13, 2-2 two and two for Rudy. You know, leads the NBA in dunks and field goal percentage. Just an absolutely awesome season going for Rudy right now. Uh, Joe Ingles, uh, he's averaging 12, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds. Uh, Ricky Rubio is averaging 13 points, 6 assists, and 4 rebounds. Uh, Jay is going 12, 5, and 2. Favorites going 11, and 7. Uh, and Kyle Korver is averaging 10 on the dot now, you guys. So, uh, good stuff right now. Uh... I like where the Jazz are going. Uh, they had they had some struggles recently uh, with 
you know, the Rockets and even the Trailblazers. Um, which is kind of, I mean, we're eventually going to get into talking about trades and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, even with somebody as great as Donovan Mitchell, for as good as he's played, you know, he he has to carry almost all of the offensive load in this Jazz team. And, uh, you know, we, we've seen a little bit of a struggle uh, just as of late in those two games. You know, we, we lost to the Blazers, beat the Hawks, and then lost pretty badly. Just kind of a bad game all around to the Rockets. Um, the Rockets, without Chris Paul and without Clint Capella, just wasn't that great of a game. Um, obviously, Harden went off and did what he does. But, uh, yeah, that game, uh, that was kind of a rough one. But, regardless, guys, we're sitting in the seventh seed. The Clippers are right underneath us. Um, the West is looking scary, you guys. I mean, it, it's such a tight race from three all the way down to ten, really. All the way down to ten. Uh, the Lakers, you know, LeBron is back, kind of. Um, he won't be playing versus the Warriors, but he is back. And, uh, you know, the Lakers, have, you've got to assume the Lakers will jump into the playoffs. So somebody's got to fall out. And I'm just kind of crossing my fingers as the Clippers. You know, no offense to Clippers or Clippers fans. I'm just kind of hoping that that's who it is. Because, obviously, I don't want my guys to fall out. Um, but very, very good stats. I mean, the Jazz, you know, as a season, they're, like I said, 30 and 24 playing really, really good. I don't know. Uh, I'm really, I'm really satisfied with the guys right now. Um, and once again, going through adversity, a lot of injuries. You know, we've had... Ricky Rubio, Dante Exum, Raul Neto, Thawos Cephalosha, Grayson Allen, Tony Bradley. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of people injured lately. Um, so it'll be very interesting uh, to see how the rest of the season goes. Like I said, the Jazz have one of the easiest schedules in the NBA. So uh, I don't see why they wouldn't make the playoffs. So that's just a quick update on their stats in general. Um, this week, you guys, we also had the Utah I mean, the Utah, what? The NBA All-Stars uh, were announced. The reserves were announced. Um, I'm not going to try to go on a Jazz fan tirade about Rudy why he didn't make it. But, you know, there's there's plenty of reason. And if you guys actually, like, read the articles, look into it, you'll find out why Rudy Gobert was probably one of the biggest snubs in the history of NBA. Um, nobody in the... Let me just say this real quick. Nobody in the history of the NBA has led the NBA in win shares... And didn't make the All-Star game. Nobody in NBA history has done that. Rudy Gobert will be the first. Um, the guy's incredible. Like I said, people say, oh, defense isn't rewarded. It's not even about that. I mean, he leads the NBA in dunks. Don't tell me Rudy Gobert wouldn't be fun to see in the All-Star game. I'm just saying. Um, anyway, Rudy definitely deserved to be in there. But let's uh, break down the people who did make it. And kind of give them their their props and their, their dues for it. So, uh, you guys already know the starters. We got uh, the starters... Steph Curry, LeBron James, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Kevin Durant, Joel Embiid, Paul George, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Kawhi Leonard, and Kemba Walker. You guys already know that. Um, and now here's the reserves. Uh, these are the... Looks like they have the East and the West just kind of together. I don't know why, but they do. Um, so let me just name all of the reserves, and you guys can kind of take your own fair judgment on them. Um... Bradley Beal, Anthony Davis, Blake Griffin, Nikola Jokic, Damian Lillard, Kyle Lowry, Chris Middleton, Dirk Nowitzki was named in there by Adam Silver, as long as well as Dwayne Wade. I thought that was really cool. Uh, Victor Oladipo, D'Angelo Russell replacing Victor Oladipo, Ben Simmons, Klay Thompson, Carl Anthony Towns, and Nikola Vucevic, and Russell Westbrook. So those are all your names for the All-Star Game. All very exciting, fun, and honestly deserving players. I'm not going to try to talk crap on anybody. None of these guys are like, oh, they didn't deserve to make this game. You know, these guys all were good. I'm not trying to say anything like that. Um, however, in the West, I do think Rudy Gobert deserves to be in there. Um, Carl Anthony Towns uh, shouldn't be in there. I, I, only because they're not winning. Obviously, he's an All-Star talent. I'm not trying to take anything away from him. But uh, the guy who I think really should not be in there is LaMarcus Aldridge. Um, I don't know why he's in there. He's averaging 21-9. Uh, and nine. So, I mean, like, like I said, don't get me wrong. Uh, his stats are awesome. You know, you look down the West and you see what the Spurs are doing and you want to reward their winning. But you also got to reward the Jazz winning, you know what I mean? And Rudy's – LaMarcus Aldridge, uh, their team, if you talk about their ratings – uh, the ratings are worse on offense and defense when LaMarcus Aldridge is in the game. So I don't know why he's in there. I would just, I would pretty much agree with this team, except, you know, replace LaMarcus for Rudy. Um, I'm not too worried. Donovan, there's, there's too many good guards out west to really put Donovan in there. However, I think Donovan is an all-star. Um, 
you know, and don't even get me started on the East, you guys. I don't know if I think the NBA should really just get out of the East uh, and the West and just have the best 24 players in the league, you know, make that game. Uh, like, no offense to players like Nikola Vucevic, D'Angelo Russell, you know, no no offense to anybody like those guys. Um, but they just, you know, if they were in the West, they would have no shot and there would be some better players in, in this game if they in, involved the West, you know, to the full extent that they could. So, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to talk any down because all these guys deserve it. I love seeing guys like Chris Middleton in there. I love seeing guys like Boos, who's having a good season, averaging 21 and 12. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, these guys are all deserving players. It's just there are some, in my opinion, that deserve it more. That's just my opinion. Um, but it is what it is, you guys. So, congratulations to all the players I named right there. Um, this should be a fun game to watch. I really wish Rudy was in there. He more than deserves it. Um, one of the biggest snubs, but I'm not going to sit here and go on a jazz like ty tirade over it, you know what I mean? So, let's go ahead and get off of that and get into the more the more fun stuff that we're talking about, you guys. We are only three days away from the NBA trade deadline. Today is February 4th and February 7th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time will be the deadline. You guys, I'm super excited. This is my favorite time of the year. This is like my second Christmas to me. Um... Especially this year because the Jazz are having their names flown around in so many rumors this year. So I'm just hoping something happens with my Jazz. So uh, we'll get into that, you guys. Uh, also, I just wanted to say before we get into it, you guys, I will be doing a post-NBA trade deadline show. I'm talking about the trades post-deadline. So we will be doing that. So uh, that should be coming maybe... Either the day after the deadline or sometime short after the deadline, I'll go down every trade, break them down, and what I think. Um, with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and talk about some trades, you guys. This is it. So, we'll go to the Utah Jazz stuff first, and then at the end, after the Utah Jazz stuff, we will get into the rest of the NBA and what I think. And we'll even get into the buyout market, which I think will be a big buyout market this year. So, without further ado, let's go into the Jazz trade rumors. Okay, everybody. Uh, so... A few names that uh, you could really see the Jazz making trades for. Let me just name a few. Uh, Nikola Mirotic is kind of a repeating name. Jazz supposedly had interest in him last year. Wouldn't, couldn't land him. Um, same situation this year. The Jazz are interested in Nikola Mirotic. Um, players like uh, Aaron Gordon, Kevin Love's name, have come up um, in Jazz trade talks. Um you know, on, online and stuff. I don't know if the front office has ever talked about him, but I don't know if Aaron Gordon and Kevin Love, I think Aaron Gordon would be a good fit here. I don't think the chances of us getting him are very good. Kevin Love, he might, I don't know what the risk is trying to get Kevin Love. I don't know if he's very realistic. But there is two names that are, well, three names that are super realistic. And then there's one that's just kind of, you know, you hope. Uh, the one that you hope is Drew Holiday. Uh, his name comes up in Jazz Rumors as well. You know, the Jazz are super high want Drew, but according to Tony Jones, who's my number one Jazz source information, because he don't report things unless it's true, um, uh, the Jazz have given phone calls to the Pelicans for Drew Holiday and have been turned down a couple times. So Drew Holiday would be the guy, out of all these guys I'm going to talk about, that the Jazz would want the most, but um, it's just not looking like that's going to actually happen. So Drew Holiday, once again, a guy the Jazz would love, but it's just not going to happen. And I feel like that's kind of how it is with Aaron Gordon. And I don't know if Kevin Love's going to fit. But the three names that are realistic trade targets for this time of the year, um, and there's a lot of them, but let's go ahead and, and uh, just break them down. Uh, Nikola Mirotic, Mike Conley, and Otto Porter Jr. The Jazz have expressed you know, major interest in all of these players. Um, so very, very interesting. Uh, if you want to break down... Uh, some of these trades. Let me go ahead. And this is an article written at uh, SB Nation, Salt Lake City Dunk, by Andrew Bailey, uh, another really good guy uh, inside with the Jazz. Um, so let's go ahead and just show some of these. He says these are realistic trades the Jazz can make. So uh, there's a lot of scenarios here. Uh, let's talk about the smaller ones first. The deal. So this is for Otto Porter Jr. This is actually a three-team trade. Um, Utah receives Otto Porter Jr., Jeremy Lin and Thomas Sadaransky. The Wizards receive Derek Favors, Ricky Rubio, and Thabo Cephalosha. And the Atlanta Hawks receive Jan Mahimi, a 2019 Utah Jazz first round pick. Um, lottery protection in 2020 pick. Um, 
So pretty much the Jazz would be giving up Derek Favors, Ricky Rubio, and Thiago Cephalosha for Otto Porter Jr., Jeremy Lin, Thomas Saranski, as well as a couple picks. Um, kind of an interesting one. I think Thomas Saranski would be a really good player in Utah. I think he'd be good. I don't know if Wizards are looking to move him. Uh, Jeremy Lin would be interesting. Uh, obviously, he would be, I guess in this situation, since we're trading Ricky, he would be our starter. Um, he can score. So, I mean, I mean, they're just maybe, maybe there. I'm not a big Jeremy Lin fan, but I mean, I guess that's kind of one you don't think about a lot. And then Otto Porter, you know, only, he's young, he's only 25, he's awesome. I think, you know, he has 26 million guaranteed next year, so we'd have to give up some money for him. Uh, but the potential there, he would play the stretch four in Utah so well. I think he'd be a really good fit for uh, for the Jazz, honestly. So uh, that's kind of an interesting trade. Um, Thabo, I don't think he'll be on the team next year. Uh, we're giving up Ricky and Favors, who are both expiring contracts, kind of. So, I don't know. Uh, kind of an interesting one. I think Sadoransky would be a good fit with Utah again. Uh, so, yes, I like that trade. I don't think it's realistic, but I do like it. Let's go into the Mirt So, Miritic straight across for Favors. Um, my only problem with this trade is I love Miritic, but I love Favors more. Just as a person, you know, I consider Favors a jazz legend, in my opinion. Um, but D-Favs, one thing that we lose in Derek is he's our starting power forward. And our second string center. So we would have to also try to find a way to get a center in there. Um, in that trade. Or find a, you know, even just another center. Epe Udo. We could use Epe Udo more. Um, so, I mean, there's some potential there. Um, I like Favors a little more than I like Miritic. But Miritic would be the stretch four that the Jazz are looking for. So, definitely an option and a very realistic one. Don't be surprised if that happens at the deadline. Um... Here's a hypothetical for Drew. Uh, Jazz get Drew Holiday. The New Orleans Pelicans get Ricky Rubio, Dante Exum, and a first. Um, you're giving up both of our guards for Drew. I would do that in a heartbeat. I'm not a big fan of Ricky Rubio or Dante Exum. I know we got a lot of loyalty, Jazz. You know, we got a lot of loyalty to Ricky. Just because he's such an awesome individual. And he really is, you guys. He's an awesome guy. Perfect personality. But he just isn't for, in my opinion... Uh, the Jazz, if we want to try to get a win. So I would do that trade, but like I said, once again, not realistic. Um, He has one. Utah receives Danilo Gallinari for Derek Favors, and now that would be interesting. Uh, Gallinari has been playing very well lately. Um, so I would do that trade, I think. Uh, obviously, we'd have to get a center again or you know, just trust Epe Udo to step up. But uh, Danilo Gallinari, I think that would be a pretty decent trade option right there. Um, as long as... You know the Clippers are willing to give it up. So these are all kind of hypotheticals. I don't know the real. I don't know how real any of those actually are, in my opinion. Um, so we kind of talked about the smaller ones, but let's get on to the big one, you guys. Mike Conley. Uh, before I get into it, I just want to give my honest opinion. I think Mike Conley would be such a perfect fit. You know, to take off that offensive load to Donovan. Uh, he's one of the top, if not one of the the best pick and roll point guards. Um, he's averaging twenty points and six assists. Take in mind, he's doing this in, like, the slowest pace in the NBA. I mean, if this guy played alongside a guy like Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert and Derek Favors, who are some of the best rollers, period, in the NBA, you know, I think he could thrive in Utah. And a lot of Jazz fans, oh, he's 31, he's he's old, he's injury-prone. Um, I don't agree. I don't, I don't think 31 is old. I think, you know, he's entering, he's in his prime. He's having a healthy season. He's in his prime right now, which is where it gets me. Like, why wouldn't you pay, you know, top dollar for somebody in his prime? Um, and another thing that a lot of Jazz fans don't think about is his contract will end the same year that we have to either extend, you know, we have to extend Rudy and we have to extend Donovan. So, the, you know, his, his contract comes off the books at that same time. So it's like perfect timing as far as we, we would have money to do that for those guys. And by that time, Conley's value should go down, you know, significantly to the point where, you know, maybe we could re-sign Conley for a cheaper price. You know, so I think it's a perfect fit. You know, 20.6 assists in the slowest pace in the NBA. You know, I think he could thrive in Utah. That's just my opinion. But here's a, a report by Heavy.com, and this is by Jeff Smith. Uh, top trade packages for Mike Conley. So here we go. Utah Jazz trade packages for Mike Conley. So this is the simple trade for Mike Conley. You give up Ricky Rubio, Derek Favors, and a first-round pick for Mike Conley. Um, I like it, and I don't, only because you're giving up two starters to get Mike Conley, um, which is kind of scary for any team to trade two starters. I know that Jay Crowder gets more minutes than Favors, 
So you're kind of not even trading two starters because you just have Jay there. Um, but I think I think that's a good trade. Um, Money-wise, we would save a million dollars, like $1.3 million. And we get Mike Conley in return. I think it's good. I don't think our first-round pick is going to be worth that much this year. Um, we'll get into a little bit of that in a minute. But uh, So that's the simple trade. Favors Rubio and uh, first for Mike Conley. Like I said, we would be losing another center, and we would be losing a power forward as well because we're not getting one back. So we'd have to find some other way to get somebody else in there. But, you know, I would I would do that trade probably, but it would be so close, you guys. I don't I love favors too much. It's hard for me to see him go. So this is the Jazz trade multiple pieces for Conley and Jermichael Green. Now, let me just first say, I think Jermichael Green would be a perfect fit here in Utah. He's similar to Jay. He can stretch the floor. I think he'd be a really good player here in Utah. Um, and this might be one of my favorite trades right here, but it's Mike Conley and Jermichael Green for Derek Favors, Ricky Rubio, Epe Udo, and Royce O'Neal, and a first. And Royce's name is where it just throws me because I love Royce so much. You know, he's young. He's such a good he's such a good relationship with the team, with Donovan. He's, he's an elite defender. A lot of people don't know who he is, but he is an elite defender. He's an awesome defender. Um, he's on such a small contract for the next two years. It's like I would hate to see Royce O'Neal go. That's where it like catches me because he's so young, he's so good. Um, but I would do this trade. I would do this trade just because um, I like the pieces we're getting back, Mike Conley, Jeff Green. Um, but we're getting rid of favors and Udo, so we would definitely need to find a center there somehow. So there's kind of some iffy ones. And this one is a pick-heavy deal with young players. So this one we get Mike Conley and Dylan Brooks. And that's an interesting one because I think Dylan Brooks would be a really good young guy. And then they get Ricky Rubio, Dante Exum, Thabo Cephalosha, and Grayson. Um, I like this trade. The reason I like this trade is I'm not a big fan of Dante. I'm not a big fan of Ricky. Uh, Thabo's an expiring deal. Ricky's an expiring deal. And then Grayson, he hasn't been good in my eyes. That's just my opinion. Um, and then we would also send a first round pick uh, for 2019 and then a first round pick for 2022. So also two picks in that. So the Grizzlies will be getting a lot of young guys. I like this trade, though, because we still keep Derek Favors. If we could find a way to get Mike Conley and keep Derek Favors, I think that would be a big win for the Jazz. So I like the pick-heavy deal. It's just the Jazz, are they, you know, what do they think about giving up? Uh, I think that's kind of one of the things that has been holding up the Jazz in trade talks is the Jazz draft pick will fall between maybe the 19th to 24th pick this year. And that's not a very valuable pick, especially in this year's draft where it's really top-heavy. And then it goes down from there. So the Grizzlies might not value the Jazz pick. They're probably going to ask for multiple firsts. And that's where the Jazz are kind of hesitant. They're trying to get the trade done without having to add a first, um, a second first-round pick. But I think it's worth it. I don't think our next year's second round, I don't think our next year's first-round pick is going to be worth that much anyway. Again, so I would do it. Um, a lot of options. We'd have to give up quite a bit to get Mike Conley for money and for, you know, just reasons in general. Um, but if we could find a way to get Mike Conley and keep Derek Favors, I think that would be awesome. Um, the Pistons are in the trade market right now for Mike Conley. Um, if you're talking about draft picks, you know, uh, their their draft pick will be more valuable than the Utah Jazz one. So we're kind of in a fight with uh, the Pistons to potentially acquire him. If you go to uh, Utah Jazz Hoops Hype real quick, um, there's a cool quote that made me happy as a Jazz fan to read uh, from Mark Stein himself. And Mark Stein said, Utah would love to make this happen, talking about pursuing Mike Conley. The chatter to this point has really been about Conley landing in Utah. If there's a leader in that race, I would have to say it's Utah. And that was just two hours ago he said that from this point. So very happy to hear that as a Jazz fan. Like I said, I think if you were able to bring in Mike Conley, you know, you would have three, once again, controversial, but three all-star caliber players in Mike Conley, Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert. Um, I think it would be perfect fit. You know, you'd have three all-star players, you know, like if you, like, for example, if you took the players out of the East, uh, I feel like these guys would be all-stars in the East. I feel like all three of these guys would be all-stars in the East. This is my opinion. But I mean, I just... I really like this move. A lot of people, you know, he's, they say he's short, but he's a good defender for a short guy. He's a, he's a good scorer. He's a good three-point shooter, and he's a great pick-and-roll playmaker. I love Mike Conley. I think he'd be perfect in Utah. We'll see what happens, guys. We're only three days away from that trade deadline. So hopefully hopefully that happens. I'm wanting Mike Conley really bad. So let's get off of the Utah Jazz now. Let's, uh, let's 
uh, go into a little bit for um, the rest of the league. Uh, NBA trade. Okay, so we have a few trades that just happened. Um, and you guys already know what I'm talking about. Chris Tapps Porzingis headlining that one. Um, very, very happy to hear that. Um, I'll, I'll explain a little bit. So let's just go through some of these trades that recently happened, some of these smaller ones, and then we'll get up to the bigger ones. Um, any big trades happened this season? So the Sixers traded Jimmy Butler for Robert Covington, Dario Sarek. We've already seen how that's kind of played out. The Jazz got Kyle Korver for Alec Burks, and Kyle has been absolutely awesome here. You know, the Cavs got Della Vidova, John Henson, Bucks got George Hill, Wizards got Sam Decker. That's just a small one. Wizards traded Trevor Reza for Austin Rivers and Kelly Oubre. Uh, I think they, you know, they did fine. Austin Rivers eventually got cut and is now on the Rockets. So Kelly Oubre potentially for Trevor Reza. I think both of them have done good in their new place. Uh, Justin Holiday went to the Bulls. Marshawn Brooks went to the Grizzlies. I mean, Marshawn Brooks went to the Bulls. Justin Holiday went to the Grizzlies. My bad. Uh, Wayne Selden went to the Bulls. I think he's been doing really good with the Bulls. Uh, that was a good trade. Uh, Carmelo Anthony got his uh, got traded to the Bulls and was recently waived the other day, so we'll see where he goes. A lot of people are saying, you know, L.A. might be that option for him. Uh, Timothy Luwawu Cabro was traded to the was traded to the Bulls for some for a second round pick, um, heavily protected. So kind of just a small move for the Bulls to fill up a roster spot since they got rid of Melo. And then this this one just happened yesterday. Uh, Nick Stauskas, Wade Baldwin were traded to the Cavaliers for Rodney Hood, um, as well as a couple second-round picks. Um, I'm a big fan from both sides. Um, let me just explain the Cavs side. They got they got two second-round picks for Rodney Hood, as well as Nick Stauskas and Wade Baldwin. Uh, two decent players right there. Wade Baldwin will probably get a little bit of minutes over there. Nick Stauskas probably will too. But, I mean, they've turned Rodney Hood into two second-round picks, and I think that's a big win. Cavs have really put themselves into a good spot to, you know, hopefully rebuild a little bit. And then the Trailblazers getting Rodney Hood. Uh, you know, as a Jazz fan, I'm a big, I'm high on Rodney Hood. I love Rodney Hood. Um, he's a really good guy. He went to Cleveland, said some things he shouldn't have, did some things he shouldn't have as far as playing time. Uh, kind of messed, messed his career up a little bit, but he's back, you guys. Rodney Hood will do so much better in a high-intensity uh, ball Ball movement, playoff team. That's how the Jazz were, and I think he will be right back. I think this may be, end up being a steal for the Trailblazers, having Rodney Hood come off their bench, uh, potentially starting at the three. Who knows? We'll find out what happens there. But I think Rodney Hood's going to do really good in Portland, so I'm really excited for Portland to make that trade. Um, Rodney Hood, back in the West. I think he's going to start playing good again. Seems like a lot of people have gone to the East and just haven't done that well. Uh, or gone to the Cavs in specific and haven't done that well, to be honest. So I think Rodney Hood going to the uh, to the Trailblazers is awesome for him. And then lastly, guys, let's just get into this really big trade that happened. And I'll break it down a little bit. Um, I don't want to waste too much of your guys' time today. But uh, the Knicks and the Mavericks made a monster blockbuster trade. Uh, the Knicks traded Chris Stapps, Porzingis, Tim Hardaway Jr., Courtney Lee, and Trey Burke. To the Mavericks for Dennis Smith Jr., DeAndre Jordan, Wesley Matthews, and two first-round picks. You guys, you know, initially when I heard this, I was like, how could you just trade Chris Tapps like that? Like, holy cow. But, you know, the more you read into it, the more you see the things that happen is the Knicks. They got rid of a guy who they didn't think was going to resign. They brought in a young guy like Dennis Smith Jr., who I think has, you know, has been completely and utterly overshadowed by Luka Doncic, which... Obviously, for obvious reasons, Luke is a, an all-star. He's a legend in the making, uh, so it makes sense. But Dennis Smith Jr. going to the Knicks is going to be awesome. DeAndre Jordan and Wesley Matthews. DeAndre had a really good debut the other day. Uh, Wesley struggled the other day with his debut at the Knicks, so uh, he, he'll be in the buyout market that we'll talk about here in a little bit. But they also got two first-round picks, you guys, so you guys don't even realize what this did. The Knicks, man, they have enough space for two max slot players next year. They have one of the top picks in the NBA, if not maybe the first pick this year. And then they got two more first-round picks coming to them. For the first time in what feels like forever, the Knicks actually have leverage. They have good contracts and a lot of money. The Knicks forever have been paying the tax, have had terrible contracts, haven't been good on their drafts. You know, they haven't done very good things. Uh, so the Knicks, to have leverage, you know, I think this is a high-risk, high-reward type situation for the Knicks. They might just screw over their franchise more and not be able to pull it out. 
or they're going to pull it out and make it thrive again. So it'll be interesting. I can't, I can't a hundred percent, uh, give this one to the Knicks. I think the Knicks are going to have to prove me, prove that point right in this off season that's coming up. And they have to sign one or two players. Uh, the way I see it though, is if say they get the first pick, this is hypothetical. Say they get the first pick, sign Zion, right? They draft Zion. Then all of a sudden players like Kyrie might be interested in going over there. Kyrie signs there. And then Durant's like, holy cow, they got Kyrie and Zion. Boom, I'm over there. And now you got Kyrie, you got Zion, you got you got Kevin, and then you got Dennis Smith Jr., you got Kevin Knox, you got Alonzo Trier, who's doing awesome. And that's just a big trade. Also, so I think the Knicks did a really good job. And the Mavericks, I think, did a really good job as well. Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to be a good player for them. Uh, he's better than Wesley Matthews. He's better than those players they had to give up. Courtney Lee will probably be bought out or something along those lines. Courtney Lee probably won't get a lot of minutes over there. Trey Burke, uh, they're definitely in need of a point guard, uh, backup point guard even. Uh, Jalen Brunson's done good. If they decide to play Luka at the point guard, then they can just go that way. But Trey Burke, I think, will get a little bit of minutes over there. Uh, Tim Hardaway, like I said, I think will be good fit for Mavericks. They have to pay him a little bit of money, so that's kind of an iffy one, but we'll find out. And then Chris Tapps, though, I think it's a low risk for the Mavericks just because they gave up two expiring guys on some contracts that weren't necessarily desirable. And Dennis Smith was already on the block this year. So bringing in Chris Tapps, I, I think Chris Tapps and Luca could really, really work well together. Um, once again, that's assuming Chris Tapps uh, gets back to his old ways after this injury. You know, a 7'3 long guy with an injury like that might be kind of difficult. So this is one of those things where I feel like both teams – got better. I think I feel like both teams did the thing that's right for their team, their organization, but both of them have their own setbacks. You know, the Knicks, it's only a good trade if they sign two big guys. The Mavericks, it's only a good trade if Chris Stapps gets good. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, how that trade goes. I think it's a really good trade for both teams. Just my opinion. You guys, let me know what you guys think about that trade. Um, that's all the trades that have happened this, this season so far, you guys. Like I said, we're only three days away. Today is the 4th, uh, February 4th, February 7th at 3 p.m. Eastern time will be the deadline. So we'll see what happens. And I will be doing a, a post-deadline uh, post show uh, to go over all the trades and what I think about them. Uh, lastly, let's go on some last uh, trade rumors. This is an article from Bleacher Report by Andy Bailey uh, saying BS meter on the latest 2019 NBA trade deadline rumors. Let's just read some of these, and then I will give my own BS meter if I think uh, something like that would happen or not. Uh, in the past few weeks, Anthony Davis, Don Maker, Ennis Cancer have requested trades. Kyrie Irving is suddenly being non-committal about his future with Boston. Chris Stapps, Carmelo, Rodney Hood, Timothy Luwawu Cabrero have been traded. Um, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and see what this is. Wesley Matthews on the move again. A lot of people are saying Wesley will be in the buyout market. I completely agree with that. Um, I think he'll have a lot of a lot of teams that will want to sign with him. Uh, want him to sign with them. Houston, OKC, Toronto, Philadelphia, and even Golden State. Golden State might be a huge one for him. He needs to go one of those shooting teams. I think he'd be really good in any 